The health effects of exposure to welding fumes, vapours and gases can vary. Effects include nose and throat irritations, asthma, wheezing, asphyxiation, lung damage, bronchitis, pneumonia, emphysema and cancer. To reduce your worker's exposure to hazardous welding fumes and UV radiation, isolate welding processes in a ventilated booth or area away from other workers. You should always consider the welding processes, filler metals and shielding gases you use to reduce fume generation. Make sure you review safety data sheets for welding rods so you fully understand the gases and fumes that are released during the welding process. If possible, substitute more hazardous welding rods with a less hazardous or lower fume consumable. Ensure you have adequate local exhaust ventilation systems, such as a ventilated isolation booth, downdraft booth, or on-tool extraction torch to extract fumes, gases, and vapors at the source. Reflections from welding arcs can expose workers to UV radiation. Install non-flammable screens, partitions, and use low reflecting paints to protect workers. Welders should position their heads outside of the welding plume to reduce welding fumes entering the breathing zone. The presence of oils, greases, paints or mill scale and zinc coatings on base metals will contribute to higher levels of fume. Base metals should be cleaned to remove surface contamination before welding. Limit access to the welding area and use signs to warn others that welding is occurring. Modify the shielding gas blend or their balance where practical to reduce welding fumes. Welders must always use PPE to reduce the risk of exposure to physical and chemical hazards. Protection includes auto darkening welding helmets, respiratory and hearing protection, fire retardant clothing, and leather welding gloves, jackets, and aprons. To reduce the residual risks from welding, others in the vicinity should use PPE, such as respirators, hearing, and eye protection. Regularly conduct air monitoring to get accurate information about the potential exposure levels to welding fumes. Air monitoring should be carried out by a competent person such as an occupational hygienist and records kept for 30 years. Different methods of welding create higher levels of welding fumes. Where practical, use a welding method that produces the least amount of fumes, such as submerged arc, TIG or resistance welding. Welding fume generation is proportional to current and voltage. Where practical, use control waveform machines that deliver low fume metal transfer modes. Smaller diameter welding rods requiring less current and voltage should also be considered to reduce the generation of welding fumes. Use a fume extraction welding torch consisting of a duct connected to the welding torch. Fumes, gases and vapours are extracted from the point source. Use fixed and flexible systems such as a welding booth, downdraft table or portable hoods with filters. Each system has advantages and disadvantages that you need to consider. Get an expert, such as an occupational hygienist, to determine the best methods of extraction ventilation in your workspace. You must ensure all equipment used in welding is adequately maintained. Electrical equipment such as power sources, welding machines and ventilation systems must be properly installed, maintained, repaired and tested by a competent person. 
Equipment used with compressed gases, including regulators, must be regularly inspected and maintained to prevent hazards such as gas leaks. Gas cylinders must be inspected to check if they are visibly damaged or corroded and whether they are within test date. Protective equipment must be in good working order and kept clean and hygienic. Some protective equipment may have a limited lifespan and need to be replaced periodically, while other types may become damaged or ineffective if stored incorrectly. Anyone undertaking welding work must be trained in the proper use of protective equipment, how to work safely in hazardous areas such as confined spaces, safe welding procedures, first aid and emergency procedures, how to access and understand safety data sheets for hazardous chemicals, and the nature of and reasons for any health monitoring requirements. If you work with welding, keep your people safe.